Good morning, everybody. We're live from the birdhouse. It is July 16th on a Saturday. And today we're going to show you some different products that have been super popular this summer and give you a little bit of an update about the different birds people are seeing or not seeing in their yards. Um, you guys have been giving us lots of feedback about your Orioles and your hummingbirds and bluebirds, and we'll share that information with you. As always, you can say hi in the comments if you have any kind of uh, any kind of questions, you can put those in there too. And of course, we want to know what kind of things you are seeing in your backyard and out and about while you are out in nature. So that's always a fantastic thing to put in there as well. I know in my yard, I've been getting lots of goldfinches, of course, lots of sparrows. There's so many baby sparrows out there right now. They're all disheveled. Their feathers are kind of everywhere. They're really funny to watch um, as they learn to navigate the world. Um, lots of goldfinches singing their, their hearts out there in their mating season now. So um, now you might start to see them gathering nesting material. It's been getting a lot of those. And then of course, as it gets later in the night, the fireflies are everywhere. So those are really fun to watch as well. So love to know what kind of things you're seeing, especially your hummingbird activity, oriole activity, monarch butterflies, all that good stuff. That's what we get lots of questions about this time of the year. So any kind of feedback you have about that is great. So let's start with hummingbirds because people have had lots of questions about hummingbirds. And a lot of people have been seeing less hummingbirds this year than they have in the past. And that seems to be across the board. Everybody is experiencing the same thing. They're not seeing as many hummingbirds as usual. Um, so if you aren't getting many hummingbirds, you're not alone. I personally haven't seen any in my backyard, whether or not they're there and I just don't see them. That's one thing. I've got lots of blooming plants now for hummingbirds. So they might be popping in and out and I'm just not seeing them. Um, but usually I would have had some coming to the feeders pretty regularly by now and I'm not getting any either. So I'm curious if you guys are experiencing that same thing. Um, as far as hummingbird feeders go, if you're starting to get discouraged because you're not getting as many um, coming to your feeders and you're debating on whether or not you should keep filling the feeders up. Um, it's totally up to you. One thing that we do have that can help with that process is using this Hummingbird Feeder Fresh. This is just natural micronutrients. You add it into your nectar. You just need a little bit of it. And instead of having to refill and switch out that nectar every two, three, four days, this will keep it fresh for more like a week or 10 days. So this is one way you can keep feeding the nectar and you don't have to keep on, um, you know, changing it out often and getting discouraged that you're doing all this work and not getting any hummingbirds. That's one thing that you can do to help prolong that nectar. Another thing I've been doing is well, I've got my, my nectar producing plants, they're all in bloom. And then I switched to this humbug feeder. And this is a, a kind of totally different idea. This is called a protein feeder for hummingbirds. What you do is inside you put some kind of fruit. They suggest a banana peel. Um, so that goes inside this little cavity here. Anything that'll attract fruit flies. So any kind of fruit is good or even some scraps from the kitchen, um, you know, pieces of strawberry or what have you, you can throw in here. And um, you hang this up and the fruit flies will find that fruit almost immediately. They're pretty amazing that way. And um, the fruit flies will lay their eggs on that fruit and then you'll get more and more and more fruit flies. So soon this humbug feeder will have little fruit flies crawling all over it. The color red draws the hummingbirds in and they will pick off the fruit flies from the feeder. So this is another thing you can do to attract hummingbirds. Really low maintenance. So the only thing you want to do is every once in a while add some more fruit pieces to the feeder in order to keep those um, to, to keep those fruit flies coming. So that's something that's kind of more low key that you can do to also still try to attract hummingbirds, but you don't have to change things out as often. Um, if you are using any kind of nectar feeder and you want to keep ants away, that's another really common question this time of the year is how to do that. We've got a couple things. Um, this is what I use. I have the what's called an ant moat or a nectar protector. You fill this with water and you hang your feeder from it and um, the ants can't 
crawl around the water to get down to the feeder. So it creates this barrier of water that the ants can't cross. I like this a lot too because it attracts birds. Some birds will use this as a, as a little bird bath and they'll drink from it, especially goldfinches. The goldfinches in my yard love this as a tiny little bird bath. So it's kind of like a two for one with your little ant moat here. So that's one thing that you can do. We also have this um, product called uh, Nectar Fortress and it's just a little gel, comes in a tube. You can maybe see it there. You make a little ring around the pole or even around the top of the feeder and um, the ants won't cross the gel. It smells kind of like um, cinnamon and clove and I guess they just don't like that smell. There's something about it that turns them off and they won't penetrate that barrier. So that's another thing you can do. Um, if, you know, putting an ant mode on the feeder makes it too low or what have you, you can add just a little bit of this, make a little ring around the pole or around the top of the feeder and that will keep the ants off of it. So a couple things that you can do to keep ants off of your feeder. So it is definitely possible. So if you're not getting a lot of hummingbirds, you are not alone. Um, now, as far as Orioles go, people have been having really good luck with Orioles, more so than I would say any other year that I've ever heard. Um, more people have been getting Orioles, staying with them consistently through the whole summer. And a lot of people are now getting them back at the feeders. The young are coming back to the feeders. So uh, people are still buying lots of jelly. We have the birdberry jelly, which the Orioles love. It's that mix of grape and blackberry. They devour this. Um, I know some are getting cat birds coming to it still too, which is a lot of fun. So um, you never know what you'll, you'll get if you keep your jelly out all summer. So birdberry jelly, uh, they're definitely eating. The young seem to really like that. And then mealworms, of course, and we have freeze-dried mealworms. We have live mealworms, um, but the Orioles are eating these. We've got people um, who have chickadees eating these, wrens. So once the eggs hatch out of these uh, the, the birds' nests, you'll see that they're going towards a lot of insect protein to feed their young. So um, people are going through lots of mealworms. So we've got a, a nice big shipment of mealworms in the store right now um, with more, even more coming in next week. So plenty of mealworms for everybody. If you're looking for a way to feed both jelly and mealworms to your Orioles, this has been a superb feeder for that. It has two cups, so you can put jelly in one, you can put mealworms in the other. Um, if you're still doing oranges, it has the little spikes for the oranges. Plus it has the weather guard on the top. So I love this one. It's all made in the US. It's made out of that poly material. So it's super easy to clean too. Um, so this has been a really popular one, but we've got all kinds of different combinations to feed the, the Orioles, the jelly and the, and the mealworms, nectar as well, if you wanna keep giving them nectar and the oranges. So there's something specific in your yard that they're eating, throw that in the comments because I'm curious to hear what kind of things um, they're eating in, in everybody's yards. And then water. Definitely want to have some kind of a water source for the birds this time of the year. Uh, we have a whole bunch of bird baths in right now. If you came in earlier in the season, you might not have seen many of our kind of more decorative cement style bird baths. We have a whole bunch now, um, but you can also give them water with some different contraptions. We have these hanging water feeders, which are a little different. It's almost like a little hanging water cooler. You fill this reservoir with the water, and then over time, as the birds drink and bathe from it, it'll just feed through and keep this tray full of water. So this is really nice. It keeps the water fresh. Um, smaller birds like this a lot too, because it's not a very deep reservoir. You might find if you have a deep bird bath, you're just getting those larger birds in it, like blue jays or robins that'll just kind of uh, lay in the bird bath and kind of splash around a bit. This will help to attract some of the smaller birds, again, like goldfinches and chickadees. They like this kind of thing. So this is something a little different. Another way to attract birds definitely is with water, especially as it gets warmer and warmer and we're in the summer months here where it's been quite warm and quite dry. Um, you'll notice that um, the birds are coming to bird baths quite often. If you have a bird bath and you're experiencing mosquitoes, 
That can be uh, a challenging thing because mosquitoes do lay their eggs in bodies of water, um, unmoving bodies of water, but there are ways around that. Um, there's companies that make different chemicals and stuff you can put in your bird bath. I don't recommend those myself. Um, just I'm not sure if it can harm the birds in one way or another, but keeping the water moving is all you need to do to keep those mosquitoes from being able to develop. You can do that a couple ways. You can make sure you're rinsing out the bird bath every day, you know, dumping it out, refilling it, or you can add some kind of a feature that makes the water move. My personal favorite are these solar bird bath bubblers, and um, they are a, a little solar panel on the top. There's different fountain inserts that you can put on the top, so you can make it kind of like a bubbler that just has uh, a little bit of water coming out, or you can make it more of a fountain where it streams out. And once the sun hits this, it will make the water move. So birds are definitely attracted to moving water as well. So this can really help to attract more birds, but then also keep those mosquitoes at bay. So this is really good. Um, other people swear by what's called a water wiggler. And so we do have, this is the kind of basic original design. We have a solar design as well. Uh, but this, it's almost like a little, it looks like a little UFO. And then there's a little propeller that's down below. And that will just spin. And it spins the water, which creates ripples in the water. But it makes it so those mosquitoes, the larva can't attach to the surface tension at the top of the bird bath, at the top of the water line. So this is another way you can easily keep birds coming and get the mosquitoes um, to to not lay their eggs. This this specific style here is battery operated and the batteries last um, for most of the season. Um, our staff here that uses it, they say they only need to change the batteries out once a year. So the batteries last a really and it takes two D cell batteries. So that's called the water wiggler. We have plenty of these in as well. So a um, couple ways that you can keep mosquitoes at bay if they're coming to your yard. And then if you are getting bitten up by bugs, we've got a few products that I have come to really love. The first are these insect shield scarves that have um, that have been treated to keep mosquitoes off. They're, they don't smell really to me i can't smell any kind of scent but there's something in here that will keep mosquitoes black flies um, that'll keep bugs away and these are good for quite a few washes uh 70 washes they'll still last so um just we have these scarves in different styles and colors and this will help keep mosquitoes off you and you don't have to worry about spraying yourself down with bug spray constantly we also have the local New York company, Saliander, their No Bite Me um, cream, which is really popular. People really like this. Um, it's safe for kids. Uh, so this is another one to keep insects off. Um, that's been quite popular. So I thought I'd mention that. And if you don't get to the insect repelling in time and you do get bitten, we do now carry the bug bite thing, which is like a little suction. Um, if you get a bug bite or even they say a sliver, I haven't thankfully gotten a sliver recently to try it out, but it'll suction that out of your skin. So something a little different, uh, but they've been quite popular and they actually work. It's kind of a random item, but uh, it does help with the swelling and itching of bug bites. It helps pull some of that, uh, the, the venom up towards the top of your skin and out so it's not settled deep into your skin. The tiki, I find this is super important to keep. I always have this in my backpack. Um, if you've ever had a tick on yourself or on a pet, I've probably found that it is really hard to get the whole tick removed if their head is embedded inside of the skin. Um, that can just detach and, and stay on the skin and they can still uh, be able to inject the Lyme disease into your skin if the head is not removed. So we have these tick keys, super simple little contraption. Um, it's kind of like one of those things that you don't think you need until you need it. Uh, but it does, it will remove not only the tick's body, but the tick's head that's embedded into the skin. So um, I think this is a, a must have, especially with um, all the issues with 
Lyme disease that we have locally. So um, some different things. And I also love these too. We started carrying these little reusable organic mesh bags, especially if you're going to the market or when you're at Wegmans, if you're weighing your, produ your produce and you don't want to keep reusing those little plastic bags, we've got little produce bags. So you can just weigh them in the little bag and um, I would attach my sticker to the little bag and then through checkout, they go and you didn't use any plastic bags. So we do have little reusable produce bags now too, which are in fun different colors. This one's teal, we've got purple, pink, and then we've got some more natural colors too that are more just like beige and that kind of thing, but um, really good for the summer. And my, my, another one of my favorites are these swig mugs. They're little tumblers. We've got some with handles that you can put coffee in. They keep cold drinks, cold and warm drinks hot. So they're perfect for the summer for your, your cold drinks. They'll keep it cold for hours and then they'll keep your coffee or tea hot as well. So these are super popular. I have a few of these now um, and we've got some new colors in. So something, it's a good gift too, if you're looking for somebody, uh, for a gift for somebody, I really enjoy these. So I thought I would mention that too. Um, getting back to more bird type of things, there are um, people who are still getting bluebirds. We talked about mealworms. Mealworms is another way to keep bluebirds coming, especially all summer long. We've got some new and different bluebird feeders in now too. So they, they're, they can be very simple, just a little cup that you put the mealworms in. They can be a little bit more elaborate like this. So you'll see some bluebird feeders are kind of closed off and then they have holes on either end uh, for the birds to pop in and out of. The idea with these is that it's supposed to um, help the bluebirds to feed because they'll they naturally go into different cavities, uh, but it'll help keep other birds away starlings and sparrows um, tend not to use these as much if there's some kind of a barrier. So um, this is one way that you can feed bluebirds all summer long and wrens and things will pop in there too. So that's, that's pretty fun. And it is goldfinch nesting season. So probably want your nesting ball out. I've been noticing the goldfinch is going towards mine. Um, they'll pull out a little bit of the nesting material and they build a nest that's really, really fluffy. They use plant down, they use spider webs, all that kind of stuff to build their nest. And you can give them nesting material by putting out this little nesting ball. You want to make sure to stay away from your dryer lint because it's not known if the chemicals in dryer lint can harm the birds in any way. Um, but say you have a fluffy dog or cat that you brush and they they shed a lot, um, you can absolutely use pet fur to help attract some of these birds um, with nesting material as well. And if you're if you're brushing them, you can use you know this like the old bags of these. If you um, you have your your birds of pull all the nesting material out, you're left with a little mesh bag. You can refill that, or you can use an old suet feeder. It's really super easy. You can put the nesting material in there and the birds will pull it out from the suet feeder. So definitely want your nesting balls out now for goldfinch nesting season. And goldfinches are one of the birds that don't change their diet like most birds do in the spring and summer. Lots of birds will change their diet from eating lots of seeds and berries. They'll switch it to eating lots of insects, but goldfinches don't do that. They eat seed all the time. So they are consistent seed eaters, even in the, um, the, the summer months. So to attract them, you want to have some kind of a Niger feeder and Niger feeders uh, come in different styles. This is this one's really basic tube feeder and it's got the really tiny little holes there for the Niger seed. Something that's really worked well with attracting goldfinches. If you haven't had good luck in attracting them, they've kind of, they tend to ebb and flow with people coming and going from their yards. But I highly suggest this Finch Favorite blend. Not only does it have Niger seed in it, that which they love, but it also has ground up sunflower hearts and that they go crazy for. So if you wanna kind of give the finches a little bit something extra and you want to kind of give yourself a leg up and maybe attract more finches than your neighbor, I would definitely go with that Finch Favorite blend. I switched a few years ago and they just go crazy for it. We did just get a brand new 
Finch Feeder in too, which is really exciting. Um, the Droll Yankee Company is well known for their uh, made in the USA feeders with lifetime warranties. And we just got a new style Finch Feeder in from them. Um, it is a mesh style feeder, so there's no perches on it. And the finches don't need perches. They can cling right onto the mesh here. There is a tray though at the bottom, which of course they can perch on to feed. But the tray is really nice because it'll help keep shells off the ground. And the, the tray can be removed as well as the base. So it's easy to clean, which is really awesome. So I love that feature. And then it has a top that's really easy to open as well. So it's got a little button on it and the top just clicks open like that. So very brand new feeder from Droll Yankee. So if you're looking for the newest and greatest, um, this is a brand new feeder and it looks really nice. I can imagine because it's all black, having the bright yellow gold finches on it would look pretty sharp. So excited to try that one out. That's coming home with me today. And if you're looking for that same style of feeder in a seed feeder to feed kind of sunflower seed or a mixed seed, we also have that back in stock as well. We were out of stock of these for a while, but we just got more in. So same thing. They've got the tray. They've got the large perches. So you can get not only the small birds, but bigger birds like cardinals and blue jays. And then it's got that top that opens up super easy. So another lifetime warranty feeder from Droll Yankee. And if you're going away for the, for some time over the summer, or even if not, and you uh, don't want to fill your feeders up as much because the birds are driving you crazy with how much seed they're eating, there's always the seed log feeders. And I love these. They last a long time. I do one of the our Flaming Hot Feast blend, which keeps away squirrels. We have a plenty of those back in stock. And then I also do another one of safflower, which the Cardinals love. And the idea with these are that you get, you pick which flavor seed log you want. They go on a really simple feeder like this that just has um, a perch and then it has a rod that goes down. These seed logs have a hole drilled in the middle. So they go onto the feeder and it takes the birds a while to go through the seed log because it's not like your normal mixed seed feeder where they'll they'll perch on the feeder, they'll grab a seed and then fly away. They kind of have to perch there for a while and peck away at it because it's all kind of uh, meshed. So it takes them a little bit of time to go through it. So whereas I have to fill my feeder every day, depending on the size, I've got one I have to fill every day, one every other day. Um, but these I change out depending on the size that I get. Um, I change them out every week. Sometimes they last two weeks, depending on the, the flavor. The safflower always lasts longer um, because the sparrows and starlings leave it for the very, very last, um, but the, the, the cardinals absolutely love it. So um, that's a good way to keep your birds fed, but not totally break the bank if you're going through lots and lots of bird seed, or if you're going away for a while and you wanna make sure that the birds have something to eat while you're away so you don't feel guilty. Um, the seed logs are really fantastic. And then also, uh, if you're wanting to clean your feeders, we have all the tools that you need to do that. Having a bottle brush is always great for your tube feeders. So we've got a bunch of bottle brushes. And if you're cleaning your feeders, it's pretty easy if you can take them all apart. That's ideal. You wanna soak them in hot soapy water. And when we clean our feeders here, we use just regular Dawn dish soap um, in hot water. If you soak your feeders for a while, that'll do most of the work for you. And you can scrub them out using a bottle brush and make sure to rinse them out really well. If you want to add a little bit of a bleach solution, then that can really help to, to get rid of any kind of extra um, gunk or mold that might be in there. So the, for the bleach solution, you want to use one part bleach to nine or 10 parts water. So pretty diluted bleach solution. Soak the feeder in there for a while. Again, rinse it off really well. Let it dry completely. Put it all together and then you're you're ready to go. So that's always important. We do have our fall bird feeder cleaning that we will be having here at the store at the end of September. So that's something to look forward to too. If you want to drop your feeders off, we will clean them for free for you during that event. We also have brushes to clean bird baths if you're looking to really scrub down those bird baths because they can be full of all kinds of interesting things, especially in the summer. So we definitely have bird bath brushes that are really 
good to scrub your bird baths. Um, magic erasers are perfect for bird baths as well. They kind of get in, um, can get some of that really tiny uh, grub off of the the bird baths. And then just to keep your bird bath clean, we do have the bird bath protector. You add just a little bit of this to the water when you're refilling your bird bath and it'll help break down some of the gunk that's in there with this. These are just natural enzymes, just kind of like that liquid that you can add to your hummingbird nectar that'll keep it fresh longer. This is the same kind of idea. So you can add this to your bird bath water. It's completely safe for the birds. It's made for bird baths specifically. And so it'll just help keep it clean for you, especially in the summer. So those are all the items I pulled today. Those are some of our best sellers and some of the things I really love. Um, if you have comments or questions, absolutely put them in the chat here. We've got several people on. So John says the Orioles I had never came back. So that happens here and there. Um, it's kind of a mixed bag for people. So some people just get Orioles in the springtime. That's really when I tend to get them in the spring and if i see them coming back in the summer it is pretty rare for me as well um, but some people have been getting them coming all all summer and they're getting even more now that the young have left the nest so if you took your feeder down getting because you were discouraged couldn't hurt if you still have some jelly left from the year to throw it back out there for a couple of weeks and see if you do get some that um that do come back but it's not uncommon for them to dwindle once uh once we've hit you know, end of May, mid-June or so for them to start to dwindle as they're um, hanging out around their nests a little bit more. Um, Bob is on. Bob says, good morning. Had my first scarlet tanager sighting. House run babies are close to fledging. Indigo buntings and catbirds singing and singing. Still have some orioles and hummingbirds around, one or two. So Bob had his first scarlet tanager. I love scarlet tanager. They're that bright, bright red bird with those black wings. Gorgeous, gorgeous bird. Um, house wrens, yes, a lot of people have been reporting house wrens nesting right now. So it sounds like your house wren babies are about to fly the coop at any time. And good to hear you have indigo buntings and catbirds still. The indigo buntings are, are gorgeous. And good to hear that you also have the Orioles. Um, Lynn is on. She says, I have a pair of Orioles and a few hummingbirds. All right, so Lynn has been getting some hummingbirds as well, which is great to hear. Um, Joster Zahn says, good morning, good morning. Um, Anne says, I love that container for the fruit flies. I didn't know about the information you shared about that. Yeah, so this humbug feeder, um, because I myself, you know, get discouraged. I probably shouldn't say it, but I get discouraged here and there when I'm putting out all this nectar for the hummingbirds and then it's like you're waiting and waiting and really not getting much. Um, so then what I do is early in the season, I've got my hummingbird feeders out with all the nectar and everything. And then as the plants that I have planted for the hummingbirds start to, to start to bloom, um, I figure they can get their nectar from there. And then I switch to the humbug feeder so they can um, get their, their protein and I'll still have some kind of a feeder up there for them. So that's kind of the way I do it for the summer and Everybody, everybody has different things that work for them, but that that's my go-to kind of system that I've been doing. Um, Pat says, good mornings. Uh, good morning. Our hummingbirds have been very busy. Oh, that's great to hear. All right. So Pat has some hummingbirds, so that's fantastic. Um, Chris is on. She says, good morning also. A house wren has discovered my little hanging birdhouse. It was singing away and going in and out like it was announcing to the world that it found a house. Is it late in the season for them to start a nest? Um, you know, it seems a little late, but it's not impossible. I'm not totally sure offhand if they have more than one brood per year. I thought it was one brood, um, but you never know. Sometimes the birds surprise you, might have multiple broods. Um, so that's that's interesting. It'll be it, it'll be cool to see what happens if they do actually start nesting. It is a little late for them, but um, you never know. Nothing's impossible. Uh, let's see. Duster says, everyday fresh water is what I like. Yeah, that's fantastic. If you can clean that bird bath out and refill it every every day, that's perfect. I do it when I'm, when we're, it's super dry out, like, like 
it has been at least here, uh, when I water my flowers at night, that's when I refill my bird bath. So um, Ed is on. He says, good morning. Guess we're kind of lucky. We're seeing our normal group of three hummingbirds at our feeders so far this year. Seems like we're not seeing the male as often, but there seems to be two females, one a little smaller than the other. They're going through about 200 milliliters of nectar per week. So Ed's had some good luck with the hummingbirds there. So that's, again, Fantastic to hear. Um, Lynn says, I've been putting out a lot of jelly and mixing the freeze-dried and live mealworms. So Lynn has been putting out multiple things there for her Orioles. And it sounds like that's working because she does have a pair that is still coming. So that is fantastic. Um, let's see. Randy says, good morning. Good morning. Um, Duster says crows. Sounds like she might be getting some crows coming to her yard. Um, Lynn says, I love my scarf. Wear it outside as the sun is going down every night. Yeah, these insect shield scarves are nice. Um, these are, they're, they're good because I personally don't really like the smell of bug spray. kind of gets to me after a while. So, um, I tend to go without, which is probably not a good idea also. Um, so these insect shield scarves are great because you can still get the protection and not have to continuously spray, um, spray yourself down with bug spray. Um, Randy says, been seeing monarchs fluttering about the horizons. That is great. I've been checking my milkweed and I haven't had any eggs on it yet. So I'm a little disappointed, uh, but my common milkweed has kind of fizzled with its blooms, but my swamp milkweed is gorgeous right now and is continuously blooming. So I'm still hoping for some more monarch activity in my backyard. Um, Jester says I have blue jays. Um, Randy says been hearing cicadas lately. Yeah, it is cicada season. It's, it's getting there. The dog days of summer um, will bring out the cicadas. So yeah, it's about time to start hearing them saying they're going to be high up in the trees. Um, and Duster says, eek, they scare me. <laughs> um, Duster also asks, how do you keep bears away? So that's really tough. Um, there's really not a good way to keep bears away. We do have a bear proof feeder, which um, can help to keep them away. Um, it, it can help them from destroying it is actually what I should say. It doesn't really keep them away. It's not like a squirrel proof feeder where um, there's these feeders that will keep the squirrels from being able to feed. The bear proof feeders, the bears can still access them, but they can't destroy them. Um, as far as keeping bears away, probably your best bet is while they're active and if they're roaming through your area, I would take your feeders down at night because otherwise um, you can try to bear proof them, but the bears can make really quick work of feeders or poles. We've had customers come in, live further down like south in the southern tier um, with poles that are just completely bent and it's insane how strong the bears are. So I would honestly take them down at night and put them up again in the morning if you do have bear activity. Um, Duster always also said, um, I saw a yellow bird. I don't know what it was. So the several things, of course, there's goldfinches around. Female and juvenile orioles will be sometimes a yellowish color, especially the orchard oriole. Juvenile male will be, will be yellowish in color. Um, could be a yellow warbler is another kind of co more common bird that we have here that's yellow. So probably one of those. It could very well be a yellow warbler. I would look up yellow warbler in your bird book and see if that could possibly be the bird that you saw. Um, Douglas is on and he says, hi Liz, where can I find a scarlet tanager? It's a very good question. So uh, more of a wooded area would be a good place to look for a scarlet tanager. Personally, I've seen them in um, Webster Park at Whiting Road Park um, as well. So kind of out by the lake, I've had some good luck seeing them there. Menden Ponds is another place to go to find the scarlet tanager. So any place that's kind of that's wooded um, would be a, a good place to see Scarlet Tanager. And I've had good luck with them at that Whiting Road um, Park in Webster, actually. I've seen them there quite a few times, probably more there than I've seen them other places, but they're scattered around. Um, but that's that would be my recommendation as a place to go to find Scarlet Tanager. Um, Duster says, I saw a red cardinal. They are gorgeous. Yes, the cardinals are uh, are definitely beautiful. Their babies are out and visiting feeders as well. 
Um, let's see. Anne says, thanks for the information. I never bought the logs, but I will now. Afraid it if I go away, my husband can't keep up. <laughs> yeah, so um, th the logs are really great because they do last a long time. And you don't have to feel guilty, too, if you go away for a little bit of time and you don't have your feeders filled. Um, the birds aren't going to starve or anything like that. They, they will feed from feeders is just a supplement from their n normal natural diet so you don't have to worry about all of a sudden all your birds are going to die or anything like that if um if you put your feeders away or if they go dry for a few days they'll go elsewhere to find food i mean it can give them a leg up to have the extra food um, but they certainly can find it naturally or else they wouldn't be here um, and same goes for the winter time as well um, any birds that are here in the winter time they can survive the winter um, without feeders, but it does help give them um, a leg up, but they can always find some kind of a natural food source. Um, Phyllis says this year, first time the sparrows are eating all the grape jelly. Orioles have trouble getting near the feeder. Every once in a while I have a, a sparrow that goes for the jelly, but it seems to just be one or two. So I'm sorry you're having sparrows eating all that jelly. It's interesting what people will get coming to the jelly. Last year I had a cardinal eating the jelly. No cardinals this year on the jelly. Um, I've also had a house finch here and there eating it. So, um, but yeah, anything that the sparrows are going for, they can kind of scare away some of the other birds, unfortunately, here and there. So I'm sorry that's happening. Um, Bob says, also saw an Eastern Kingbird this morning, yet another flycatcher. Yeah, Bob said, good luck with flycatchers around his place. And the Eastern Kingbird is a really cool one to have around. Um, Randy is trying to help identify the bird, the mystery yellow bird that Duster saw. And he says, Tweety bird is yellow. So perhaps um, if you, it was being chased by a black and white cat, you have yourself a uh, Tweety bird. <laughs> so there you go. So help, some help um, of, of an identification from the audience. So thank you. Um, it looks like that's everybody's comments and questions. We'll be back on Tuesday with another broadcast. And until then, enjoy your weekend and have a great day. Bye-bye.